All right, so this is a uh, slip. This is what we call the combination of the center and guard on the front side, okay? So these are two-man uh, combinations. And like I was saying, as much as we can, we want to try to make the whole thing into either single blocks or two-man combinations, okay? And so just to kind of take you through the process of this, and I think the communication from these guys up front is extremely critical. So the center is going to ID the mic or who he is working to, okay? And I think everybody does that. I think one thing that we did really well there um, is not only are we going to ID who we're working to, but we're also going to do it by who we're working with. So when the center comes up here and looks at this front, okay, he is, and we're just running uh, you know, a, a lead zone play. And again, I don't want to get too much into the schematic of it. Uh, I want to talk more of the fundamentals, but this is the defender that the center is working to. He is going to work to that defender with the play side guard. So he is going to not just say 22 is the mic. All he's going to say is slip 22. When he says slip 22, the play side tackle knows, oh, dang, okay. He's slipping it, so the guard is not with me. So now if my end goes inside, I'm the tackle on the base reach, I have to turn back on that end because the guard is not going to come overtake it, okay? Now, the center is the last man in the two-man combination. So if the shade or the G were to cross-face the center, then the center would turn back. So it is a two-for-two two combination. and and one, the last man in that combination is the quote turn back player. I, I think that is a critical aspect of this is knowing where the combination stops. And in a slip, the combination is going to stop with the center. Now, looking at this exact picture, when the linebacker gets plus this far out, we, it may be better for the center to call the combination with the guard tackle. Okay, which we'll get to, but that would be an over to 22. Now the tackle would know, oh, okay, the guard is with me, okay? But let's watch this one. This is a slip, okay? And what we're trying to do with the, with the uh, uncovered lineman is we are trying to pop his shoulder with our backside hand, okay? And what I say is I want to see his shoulder go soft, not ours. And by that, I mean... You see how his shoulder turns away? What we don't want is for our shoulder to be the one that turns away on the way up to this linebacker. So the steps of this guard are going to be determined by how wide this linebacker is. Here, he can really only give one step play side, one step backside, pop the shoulder before he's got to get to this linebacker because he's so far front side. You will see some teams that will near foot this. They'll step near foot, bang this, and then get to the front side landmark. The center is trying to get his eyes to the armpit. So the center is going to work to get his eyes to the armpit, and now the guard is going to work to get front side on 22 here. Now, I like this clip to show you what I mean by it is a true two-man combination. Now, in reality, they should have over this to 22 but they said slip so that means the tackle's on his own so the tackle has to turn back on that defensive end and the guard has to slip his way through that inside movement to get to the linebacker if he goes flat okay if the end goes flat and the guard's trying to get to the linebacker and he can't he's going to get picked and that's what I mean by when I was talking about, you know, we're trying to make two-man combinations, but we'll have to make other calls if we're afraid of getting picked. But when you watch a lot of the really good outside zone teams in college and especially in the NFL, you're going to see more of these guys trying to slip through the movement rather than make a call to bring all three for these three, okay? But that is a slip on the front side. And you see what happens here. Let me go back. <clears throat> okay. You see what happens here with the guard. 
he's able to get through. He just continues to run, and he's able to push this linebacker past the running back who can then cut behind him, okay? So whereas you sometimes may be tempted to try to make this a three-man zone, the more you get into three-man zones and making different calls, the more it's kind of like pulling the string on the sweater. Like you pull it trying to fix the sweater, but then the more you keep pulling it, the more you're going to keep having to make more calls. This way, I think you're better off trying to get the guard to slip through uh, and then letting the running back cut off of it.